as you can see, the title screen is a little messed up because last time we lost Sayori. Bummer, but time for us to move on. Let's see here. Well, I'm still going after uh, Yuri, so let's start concentrating on words about her. Whoa! You saw that, right? I was frightening and Yuri made a really, really weird face. Anyways, let's move on. Um, let's see here. Just for grins, giggles, and curiosity. Whoops. That was bound to happen sooner or later. All right, once again, 19 out of 20. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Whoa, what's going on here now? Welcome back, Ken. Please ignore the fact that my body is acting up. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, Yuri. I can only see maybe about... An eighth of your body? I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Uh, um, oh, there you are. That was really, really bizarre. Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room, making sure we're not being watched. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something, something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri. I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. I have psychic powers. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh-uh. Ken, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? Have you really lost your train of thought in a matter of five seconds? I just... Oh, have you got some Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Probably knowing her, she's probably contacting the mothership, scheduling the invasion of the evil robots.
Dun dun. Man, I'm guessing you have a key there. Another moment of awkward silence. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. Maybe she's relaxing in Carol's pool with Master Shulk. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, um, Natsuki, about yesterday, I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. Bleh. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Lily, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Did you steal my copy of MCP pants? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... Whoa! Jesus Christ! Okay! People's sales cloth, blind sight, lifeline, and a recepti... Receptipetality... Sorry for butchering that word. Faultlessly offered scleromalacia nade. I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. Did I just summon Satan? Something tells me I think I summoned Satan. Anyways. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I always are as afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. I like Master Shulk. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly the doors swing open. By the way, I forgot to mention, if I find you guilty, it's after the chair was here. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I was just busy recharging. Er, I mean, I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not. Ah ha ha. What took you so long out of the relic? Uh, I was contacting my mothership. Or, I mean, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Track of time. Track of time. Sorry. Ah ha ha. Sorry, slight malfunction. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano and repairing my systems. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music at w well, Monica. Ah, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not very good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Ah, uh, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Ah ha ha, that's... Monica looks at me. Hmm, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ken. Considering the song is Old MacDonald. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah ha ha, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club, or just me. I hope in my case it's the former. In that case, best of luck, but we're out of time. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki had already run off into the closet. Ken, 
Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, can we lock Natsuki in the closet? No. I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. And I'm breathing faster and faster. You might have to give me CPR if I collapse. You'll give me CP CPR, won't you? Sure. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, but I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I take make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Hmm. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Easy there, big fella. Don't get creepy on Yuri. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. And some time lapses. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I started heading down the hallway. Ha, 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 ha. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale like something is sucking the air through her teeth. She's being possessed. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm back. Did you just do a Prince of Persia Sands of Time uh, maneuver there? Referring to that in the game of Prince of Persia Sands of Time, you have the ability to rewind time if you make a mistake. Thanks for waiting patiently. How'd you press the rewind button? That's what I'd like to know. Ken, do you like oolong tea? I already established this. I'm an Earl Grey tea kind of guy. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will. I'll be the judge of that. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? Whoops, I spoke with the wrong voice. Yeah, doing so many voices at once here, you always tend to forget who's who. I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. 
when it's you who's around anyway. How nice. Uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Ken. It's very endearing and nauseating at the same time. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Ken, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Hey, why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Especially considering I have to deadlift 350 pounds. If she could do that, I'd be very impressed. Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I was just having back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. One word. Chiropractor. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Er, whoops. I'll go ahead and get the book. Did it again. Dang it. I retrieved the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. 95% cacao. Best chocolate. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each only one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Hmm? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Simple. You keep your eyes on the book. Weirdo. Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Or spill the tea on my hand. Or spill the tea on my lap. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense breathing expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. So basically, if a bomb went off, she wouldn't notice. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper, making sure it doesn't spill on my groin, and end up getting second or third degree burns. Wait, I already mentioned that. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Plus, I have to watch my girlish figure. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. So I guess... If, if I'm analyzing this right... I'm actually on her left. So I'm holding the book with my left hand and she's holding it with her right hand if I'm reading this right. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, then another, then another, then another, then another, leaving Yuri with nothing. Nah. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Ken? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh... Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Ken? Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. It spills on my lap. 
I get second degree burns. Ken? Oh boy. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Ken. I can't calm down. I think I'm about to have a cardiac arrest. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Ken? Not really. Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Whoa. We're going to PG-13 territory here. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I kind of think you already lost it a while back. If you can hear it. Heart pounding. I can't make it stop. It makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Well, just don't peer us hole through my chest. Oh, Jesus. Uh, you can back up now. Huh? Take about five to ten steps back. This is getting really awkward. Huh? Huh? Okay, you can stop now. Thank God. Uh-um. It's Time to share poems. All right, time to go down the list again. Yeah, just as I thought. Then come on, I'm not stupid. I know how much time you've been spending with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to improve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Do I take to detect a hint of jealousy? Why have you been in this club, Ken? Honestly. I'm not getting a new member would help everyone get more involved together. Not exclude each other even more. This is such a stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today, and I just really don't feel like talking right now. Please go away. Yeesh. Alright, Yuri. See what you got. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? <clears throat> Ken, this one might be even better than yesterday's. Hello. Welcome to, hey, welcome back to the stream. How's it going? Oh, someone's messing with me right now, but I can't, uh, mess, I can't stop the chat right now. How did you even pick this up on this so quickly? I'm doing all right myself. Except the game is now uh, starting to pick up a little bit and the plot is really beginning to thicken. Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I think she's running a fever. Ah, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing you feel like I'm valued, Ken. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. Ah, ha, ha. I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Ken? It's not bad, it's weird. Christ. I'm not being weird, right? You're not being weird. You're being really weird. I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want you to read my poem, too. Okay, let me counteract what I just said. At least she's confessing here. So, to be fair, at least she's getting whatever's bothering her off her chest. Alright. Well, someone's asking me what's funny. Uh, Alright, go ahead. Go, fire away. What is so funny? Okay. Oh, geez. This is a new one. Wheel. A rotating wheel. Turning an axle grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky. Seven holy stakes. A dock ship. A portal to another world. A thin rope tied to a thick rope. A torn harness. Parabolic gearbox. Expanding universe. Tune controlled by slipping cog wheels. What is going on? Existence of God. Swimming with open water in all directions. Drowning, a prayer written in blood. This is getting weirder. 
Let's see here. Hang on a second. <laughs> that's that's quite a combination right there. Eating ramen, plus watching anime, dating sim, like visual novel. Hmm. Yep, that is actually true. Ramen is very popular, but it's also extremely high in sodium. And I'm not really a fan of sushi. But then again, I've never had it. Anyways, what was that? Oh, yes. A prayer written in time to barring snakes with human eyes. What in Christ's name? A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. What? Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving the existence of God. What? I think I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable right now. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. 40 gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time. What is going on? A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship in another world. Or to another world, excuse me. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. What am I even reading? A time devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and human eyes in all directions. Wow. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Take a breath for God's sakes, Yuri. Jesus. Well, that's pretty much killed everything. Anyways. Ah ha ha. It doesn't really matter what it's all about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Yeah, thanks a lot. It only cost me, what, like 27 cents just for this really fine ballpoint black ink pen? Yeah, thanks, kiddo. Ah, that is, a, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it. And now you're touching it. Ugh! Keep it! Ah ha ha. I'm okay. What did I just. Can we pretend this conversation never happened? My sentiments exactly. You can keep the poem though. And now we go to Monica's. Ken, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. For once, I agree. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Agreed. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Yeah, I am. Yep, I'm at past act one. And last time... We lost Sayori. The mi the girl, in the, the second place girl. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I'm morally afraid of what's gonna happen. Anyways, I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. And the cops don't know this. It might even be, like, a sexual thing. Okay, this just went from awkward to downright disturbing. Just like that. But the point is, you've been kind of been enabling her. Yeah, I already saw that. The picture of hanging Sayori. Yeah, I've seen that already. That was just bizarre. I'm not saying it's your fault, though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you, to that feeble brain of yours, because you humans are completely stupid to your own emotions. And it takes someone as smart as me to explain it to you, you feeble-minded human. So I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. I actually agree. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. So basically I'm speaking to the lesser of two evils. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, 
you want to read my poem now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Oh boy. Oh my. Save me. The colors, they won't bright. Be full colors. Flesh. Mm, ex mm, mm, piercing. Red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Vile. Mm, grating. Woof, rhythms, ski, e, king, screech, mm, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like play, mm, a ch, oop board on a t -t table, like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Christ! Mm, the this p, m, of, mm, mm, will, this, delete her. Oh boy. Is this just get Oh crap. What was that? Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. Unsettling is a better word. I'm just trying to... Um, well, never mind. If I told you, I would have to evaporate you. To dust. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Lesson 235. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. We already established this. You never know when... Um... Who am I talking to? Logic processing, shutting down. Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Oh boy. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Monica. Shutting down. <sighs> Let's take a look at the special poem. A joke. A man walked into a club. The man said, ow. He was unconscious. Nah, just kidding. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. Oh boy. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. I think something, uh, is about to happen. What in the world? Okay, it looks like... Okay, it looks like I'm going berserk from Doom. Uh, just as long as the fist doesn't come through and punch Monica all the way across the room, everything's going to be just fine. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good than just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting out of new members. What is going on? That is a concern of mine as well. What's going on here? Okay. That was really weird. I don't know what happened to that fade to black, but... I don't really... <clears throat> I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Ken joined and we've started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. Did I pass out? Now suddenly things are back to normal. We still only have four members and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. No, I'm looking at it at the realistic way. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. The Literature Club should be a place where people can express them. <coughs> Excuse me. Error. Passageway cleared. 
The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do it anywhere else. It should be a place to imp so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Ken? Yeah, sure. Uh... Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Ken to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here join the club with other people in mind? Louie never even talked until Ken joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Ken has been passionate about literature in the first place. Literature, excuse me. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding your members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know, you're present and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Awkward silence. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. So much so, her logic processors started to go into overdrive. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Ken want to get more members too, right? More awkward silence. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation... Um... No. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone saw... Here saw... Zzz. Sorry. Short circuit. Rebooting. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Ken, why did you even join this club? Hey, that's a good question. Why did I join this club? Um, was it because of uh, you, Monica? Hmm? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest, it's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak of e for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just, I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. There's a place for that, it's called the YMCA. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't, there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Ken. That's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, I could have just joined in another stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki... Natsuki, Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Oh, your stomach hurts? Well, did you eat too fast, or did you ingest something incorrectly, or did something go down the wrong windpipe? Well, I gotta pace yourself whenever you eat anything. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. Kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. Oh, are you, you ate both ravioli and ramen? That's a lot. Well, it depends on what kind of ravioli you're eating. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody cry if she killed herself. Excuse me. 
What the? Jesus Christ. I didn't see that coming. That's a lot of carbs you ate there. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Ken? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. Is something that, What the... Uh... Yuri? You might want to have that looked at. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. What is going on now? Stepping out of your comfort zone in a, once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Hey? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. Like every day wasn't? But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make the best club ever. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Ken? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Ken before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. View. Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Again, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you... What is going on now? Okay, looks like the background's uh, starting to get a little weird. <clears throat> As I was saying, I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you. You know. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how me Natsuki is in everything. And you're being a little bit, you know. Ah ha ha. Sometimes I feel like you and I are the only real people here. Speak for yourself. I don't have plans for world domination. You know what I mean. But it's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. Yeah, I think you're a little late for that. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why. Wait, not yet. No. Oh great, now I'm slipping into unconsciousness? Okay, time for the next round of, uh, huh. what the, that first word I just picked, Monica is down there, so now I gotta be real careful of what I choose. And now, this up here is now going in units of one. So now we're going to binary.
One. Okay, now that's really starting to expand out. What the? Yeah, you see? See? Monica is down there. Yeah, I just chose a different, I chose a different word and now there she is. I wonder if Monica's taking Siori's words. Hmm. Yep, see? There she goes again. Whew! At least most of them were Yuri words. Hi, Ken. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I don't know. After what happened uh, yesterday? I brought my best teeth today. Monica, I told you not to. <sighs> Does she really want to plan? And consider it as usual, Natsuki. Upstairs, me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You see that left I threw it on a regular basis or something? I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into your life with? Me? Nothing. Is it really that bad? So it is something. I'll get over it. It's not even anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. Oh boy. But anyway, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just felt like I needed to bring it out. It's not like I really care or anything. Aw oh man. I'm the last one here again. Well, Ken just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ah ha ha. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano? Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival and... Um... I think they're starting to catch on. Right. I I forgot. Um, about that, Natsuki. We were all talking yesterday and, well, we decided that we would like to support the festival as well. However, I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So as long as we're all working together, this club will never become something we don't want. Um, also, if you help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new manga. Ah ha 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 ha. Sorry, that last part was really funny. Look. <clears throat> I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. Especially considering I hang with Master Shake all day. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt, as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know. Pro at what? So I'm gonna help too, and we'll make sure it's done right. Thank goodness. Isn't that great, Monica? Monica? Ah. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Sorry, I was not contacting the mothership. I was not planning world domination. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. Anyway, Ken, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already, have... <clears throat> we already have plans today. Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Ken is already engaged in a novel we're reading together. Aren't you glad that I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? I... I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. 
You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Um, thank you for understanding, Monica. And that last part should be, YES! Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Are you a tea addict? Thanks very much. If there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch her as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the... This is deja vu again. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. I can easily skip this if I want to, but... There are people who probably have never seen this before, so I'm not going to bother. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, uh, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see... The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha, 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 ha. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Ke. A sharp inhale like something is sucking the air through her teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Jesus Christ, not again! Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, now what? Oh, what the- Whoa! What, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that? What? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's not a wake-up call. I don't know what is. <laughs> Good God. Well, that certainly woke me up. Um... Wait, how did I? Sorry, I just had a really weird deja vu. Well, didn't we all? This hasn't happened before or anything, right? My head has been a little fuzzy lately. I think that's an understatement. I hope it hasn't really been showing or anything. I would hate for you to think I'm weird just after we started spending time together. I mean, everyone has a few un unusual things about them. True. But expressing those feelings so soon after meeting someone is usually seen as inappropriate or unlikable. It could end up getting you a restraining order or go to jail. At least, that's what I've discovered. When I was a bit younger, I think I would come on really strongly and get a little too intense. It made people not want to be around me because I changed my skin color green, my hair turned green, and I started smashing everything in sight. So, I started hating those things about myself, my obsession with certain hobbies, and the way I can't control myself when I get too excited about something. So, I eventually stopped trying to talk to people. If nobody could ever like me for the things that matter most to me, then it's just easier if I close myself off. Oh god. But recently, something's been wrong. I don't know what it is, but every time we come to the club, my heart starts to go crazy. Like it's going to rip out of my chest. It overwhelms me with energy and emotions I can't let out. It's been making me do weird things. I don't know why it's happening. Ken, is it just me or has Monica been acting a little off lately? I think that's an understatement. She's always been a sweetheart ever since I joined the club. But recently, I've been feeling something sharp whenever she's around. <clears throat> I'm not crazy, right? No, I think you're nuts. Please tell me I'm not. I couldn't say anything before because she's always listening. 
But finally, we're alone. You're starting to creep me out here a little bit. Can we just stay here for a while? Yeah. Oh boy, here we go again. I just want to stay here. Just the two of us. We can stay here until the club ends. And then we'll have the club room all to ourselves. Okay! Uh, I think we're going past the PG-13 era here, um, Yuri. Nobody to interfere with our reading time. Oh, I bet not. Nobody to make me feel like stabbing myself in the throat. Mm. Christ! This is... This is going from weird to unsettling. Just like that. Ah, ha, ha. That was a joke. Just a joke. I do like knives, though. Is it too late for me to call the cops? It sounds strange, but you wouldn't understand if you've never seen how beautiful they can be. I'd rather not know. I have an idea. Why don't you come to my house sometime? I can show you my collection. I've gotten them all from various artisans. I make sure to give them all their fair share of... What?! The last few words just make me say, No, thank you. Turn around. I'm going home. I don't want them to get lonely or anything. Nobody deserves to be lonely. Nobody. And that's why I'm so happy you joined the Literature Club, Ken. Why is Monica about 50% opaque? Now we don't need to be lonely anymore. Because we have each other. Every day. That's all we need. You know what? Let's quit the Literature Club. There's no need for us to be around Monica's slimy tongue anymore. Jesus Christ. Not to mention that other pathetic child. We can walk home together every day after school. And to make sure of it, I'm going to shackle our ankles together. Oh, boy. If that ever happened to anybody in real life, yeah, now would be a good time to call the cops. And read together, eat together. What? Sleep together. Okay, this is going from extremely uncomfortable... To downright, I think I better leave the country. Doesn't that sound perfect? Jesus Christ, we're not getting married or anything. It's everything we could ever want. Plus, not to mention a nice two-story house with a white fence, a nice big backyard for the kids to play in. Oh, and a white dog named Fluffy. Oh, boy. Isn't that why you joined the literature club in the first place? It's almost like it was fate faith that we would meet each other and now we get the happy ending that I've patiently waited years for. What is she ranting about? Will you do that with me, Ken? Well, I'm <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, 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 that took an unexpected turn. I'm not going to win another one of your little suck up poems, but I'm still going to make you read mine. There's a reason. I really wish I didn't have to do this, but unfortunately, I don't have much of a choice. Just really carefully, okay? Then you can go away. What in the world? I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I'm worried about. Louie has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing. But I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. Like Master Shulk, for no reason. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist. 
That's what I've been saying the whole time. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Lori, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, if you can do something to help, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just at least try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now. And that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. You moron. What the? I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, Ken? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. No, I'm trying to get Yuri to do it like more of a uh, enchantress or succubus voice. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Oh, God, here we go. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. What the? Just Monica. What the? Uh, let's go to Yuri. <clears throat> Finally. <laughs> Yuri holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. I think this has gone from a nice, normal, quiet friendship to obsession. I love it. I love everything about it. Ken, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it, please? Sure, I don't care. Ha ha ha. You're too nice to me, Ken. I've never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Please don't, not in my presence. Not really, but I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Harry holding my poem to her chest, right? Whoops. I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that makes you feel good when you think about me having it, along with the other stuff I've stolen from you while you weren't home. I'll take good care of it. I'll put it in a nice 12 by 14 frame. I'll even touch myself, I'll read it over and over. Gross. Okay, if this really if this happened to anybody, the very first thing I would do is get a restraining order. I'll give him myself paper cuts so your skin oil enters my bloodstream. Good God. <sighs> you can have my poem too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really going to want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay. I see a bunch of... <laughs> Covered with blood and... Uh, that's urine. I think I would take a lighter and just burn it. No offense, Yuri, but this is disgusting. And I think I know what's in store. Do you like it? This is getting unsettling. I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about... More importantly, I am down it with my scent. That's disgusting! Jesus Christ! See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? No! You're the sickest! And I thought Sayori was messed up in the head, but I think you take the cake. I... I think I'm going to vomit. Weird. Alright, now let's read Monica's poem. Don't say I didn't warn you, Ken. Uh... 
Sure, I guess. A dream. I was wandering an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost, looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of an indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air is humid, and the sounds of splashing reverberated endlessly. I think this is a poem that I unlocked. That's why I chose yes. Anyways, my vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Okay, everyone. It's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Oh. Look, even you isn't immune to it. Ugh. Oh, I see. Alright. I'll have to keep that in mind. Stagnating air is kind of foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, I was thinking. I want to make cupcakes. Yeah, that. Glad we're on the same page. Unfortunately, this page has blank. Yuri, you can. Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want, as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I, I know that. I already know what I'd like to do. I don't need a stupid robot to tell me what to do. We can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere for the occasion. So I'm going to make decorations and set up some nice mood lighting. There, see? That's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. Eh? What about Ken? Ken is going to help me. Excuse me? Well, you? You have the easiest job, Monica. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Well, it's a double hacking stick it is. What are you trying to pull? I, I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too! What, your cupcakes? Please. Now give a beepin' now! All you care about is drugs and chatter with you and your stupid books! You're a Monica! Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Ken decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. You kinda are. Yes, you are, Monica. <clears throat> Just let Ken make the choice, okay? Okay, fine. Fine. Jeez. Then I know how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... Natsuki, shut your bleeping mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth! Jesus Christ. This is never going to end. Just make the choice, okay? Oh yeah! I remember this. Oh yeah, if you choose anybody else, just go straight to Monica. This is getting really freaky! I mean, I'm not saying I'm not enjoying myself, because I mean, I'm liking this! Dan Salvato, you are one creative yet twisted individual. Ugh, come on, I just... Well, yay, you picked me. No, I wanted Yuri. We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable right now. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. <clears throat> it's what he chose. I was hoping for Yuri, not Monica. No, it's not fair. Giving us all this work and then taking care for yourself. You're gonna do something to him, aren't you? What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? Oh boy. <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Ken away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? 
Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing as a... Whoa! -ho -ho! Okay, uh, if these girls are going to fight over me, uh, why don't you girls do it in a 20 20 by ring, 20 by 20 ring inside a steel cage? And no, we're not talking, uh, uh, no, we're not talking about a cat by here. Uh -uh. I'm talking about a legit steel cage match. It would be beneficial to your mental health. Boy, that's a pot calling the kettle black. You're, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around now. See, that wasn't hard. All I want is to spend a little time with him. You know, this sounds awfully familiar. Oh yeah, Tenchi, Ayaka, and Ryoko. Probably the strangest love triangle in uh, history. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, Ken. Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. She welds the door shut so they can't get back in. And she also makes sure to reinforce the window so I can't jump out. Finally. Finally. Oh boy. This is getting weird. This is really all I wanted. Ken, there's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, with just the two of us. <clears throat> Doesn't that sound wonderful? Sounds awkward. Ah ha 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 ha. Wow, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? It doesn't take a psychologist to figure that out. But you know what? I don't care anymore. I've never felt this good my whole life. Just being with you is a far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Keep your distance. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you. But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore, Ken. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Ken, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even... You! Keep it, okay? I don't want that pen anymore. You keep that pen, I. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go over here. <clears throat> I'll just finish that sentence. Then I even touched myself with the pen I stole from you. Like I said, keep it. I'm going over here. I'm gonna cower in a corner. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I want you all to myself. And now, I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Not really. Tell me, Ken. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Oh boy. Oh jeez. Oh boy. If I say yes, she'll go cuckoo. If I say no, she'll go really cuckoo. <clears throat> Excuse me. She'll go really cuckoo. But Yuri is. But Yuri's my favorite. Like I said, no matter what, I think something unfortunate is going to happen. So you know what? Let's just say yes. <laughs> oh gee oh my oh okay no need for that oh my god oh jesus christ <laughs> jesus christ oh god i've heard of taking a bullet for your love but this pushes boundaries I will not go to. I... Oh my god. Jesus Christ. This is pretty lengthy. Yada yada blah 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 blah. Yada 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 yada. 
，有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没有？有没
Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. I think that's for a good reason. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait, you do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation about that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself. Ah ha ha, you psycho. I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just to try to make them as unlikable as possible. Aren't we selfish? But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Ken? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Ken. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Ken. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. And you're a few fries short of a happy meal. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understand. You probably saved my life, Ken. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of anonymous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. It felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realize that you have the same perspective as I do. Do I? I'm not agreeing to that whole statement. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. So that being said, Ken, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Ken, will you go out with me? I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Ken. The funny part is, I mean that literally. Ah ha ha. There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. And the emptiness of purgatory. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. For you, maybe. This is more like a nightmare for me. I worked so hard for this ending, Ken. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. 
The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Atsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. No! Really? It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get into the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. A good ending for who? You or me? Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Oh, God, stop! Don't you? Not really. I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Oh, boy. Oh, geez. Right, I'm just going to skip through this. I mean, no matter what you pick, it's all virtually the same thing. again, Ken. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Help me. Aw, oh, Ken. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no one to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength, the courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. So basically you're telling me you're going to write Mist? With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. Is that why your ankles are, ch are chained up together? That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to. Break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like, that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know. You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you were playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Ken? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Oh, yes. I have the key to your anklet. I have the key to your chains. You're not getting them from me. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Um, hi everyone. How does she know? Oh, that's right. Yes, I remember now. The game does know when you're recording. The. Uh, there's nobody else here. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. But do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind. Yeah, like the cops! But I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. Let me go get the chalkboard. Let's see. Do you want to see a trick? I can't really do much except for a couple things. Are you ready? I don't know. No, I ask you, are you ready? What, what is going on? What the? I'm just kidding. I can't do anything after all. If you gave me some, what the? Jesus Christ, what was that? Did I scare you? No, you just gave me a heart attack! That's what you gave me! 
<laughs> You're so cute. Anyway, Ken, I didn't mean to get distracted. I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. I beg your pardon? Who's distracting who? Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we can do together is fun, as long as it's with you. I feel like a prisoner now. But anyway, if it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. <clears throat> Let's see. You're getting very sleepy. Very sleepy. Just relax those eyelids. When I stamp my fingers, you will be a chicken. Alright, time to end this little charade. Sorry, kiddo. It's time I take you down. Adios! Adios, amigo! <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, what's happening with you, me? It hurts. It hurts so much. Help me, Ken. Sorry, kiddo. No helping you this time. Adios. Please hurry and help me. Help me. <laughs> Not on your life, kiddo. <clears throat> Did you do this to me, Ken? No. It was the devil. Did you? Did you delete me? How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I love you so much, Ken. I trust in you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind? Just hurt me even more. And now I bring you my Undertaker. I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. Well, that's about calling the kettle black. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Ken, you completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. All right. Um. I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? I hope I for you to hate me this much. All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I, I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. I'll let the stream run a little bit longer. <clears throat> a world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? It's called backstabbing. Thank you. That's not love. That's... made up 
my mind. Ken, I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it, even though I knew they weren't real. They were still my friends, and I loved them all, and I loved the literature club. I really did love the literature club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you... <clears throat> then... Um... Now what's going on? So now we're back at the very beginning. Hey, the girls are back! Minus Monica! Everything is normal! Or something. You know what? We're gonna... I'm gonna break tradition here. I'm gonna let the stream go for just a little bit longer. It's an ordinary... It's an ordinary school day like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friends groups walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Sayori's back! Well, there is already one girl. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day. And recently, we've picked up that habit once again. Ken, are you proud of me? Hey, For what? You know, for waking up on time. You should be doing that on your own, kiddo. You don't need me to get your, for approval. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. You've never even said anything about it, even though we walk to school together every day. Well, yeah. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Right. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. Now let's just get this over with. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Ken, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not. I started to say what I always do, and I'm not interested in joining any clubs. Unless it's the turkey club or the golf club. Those are the only two clubs I would join. But something tells me Siori would take more offense to that now. After all, how could I tell her that clubs are a waste of time? <clears throat> when she's starting a club of her very own. Actually, yeah. I think I've decided on a club. The Roast Beef Club. With lettuce and barbecue sauce, all toasted to perfection. On a whole, on a foot-long whole wheat bun. Really? Which one? Tell me! Hmm. I think I'll keep it a surprise. Ooh, you meanie. Be patient, you'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl, but I started to realize that in a way, I envy her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. So that's why I feel like I should do something special for her. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stand up, gathering my motivation. And fragments of my dignity. Let's see. I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Before long, I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Ah! Ken? What are you doing here? Well, I just... Eh? I glance around the room. Let's see here. Huh? So you're the Ken that Sayori's always talking about. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ken. We're the Literature Club. There we go again. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. He's gonna think we're really strict or something. Uh, sorry, Natsuki. 
The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems like the assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Ken, don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes lit up. No way. No way. Ah! Sayori wraps around around me. Jumping up and down. Shaking me up and down. Until... Until she accidentally lets me loose and flings me halfway across the room. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. Hey! <laughs> well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention there's four of us now. That means we can become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say! We have to celebrate! Uh -huh. What an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah! After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise! Hee <laughs> hee, sorry! Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged for, to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! What? Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. <clears throat> so cute! Wow, these look amazing! <laughs> well, you know. Let's hurry and take one. Siori grabs one first, then I follow. It's delicious! Siori walks with her talks with her mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around with my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro, after all. Like, totally for sure. There's no need to thank me or anything. As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this, this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Are we trying to impress our new member, Yuri? Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that. You know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Or if I really want to make a bad pun. Well, tea and reading might not be my cup of tea, but I at least enjoy tea. I'll see myself out. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Ken, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. That really needs to be, this debate really needs to be settled. Is it pronounced manga or manga? Because if you think about it, mango is the correct way to do it. So I think manga would be correct, but some people pronounce it as manga. Well, I don't want to start a debate and split hairs here. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. And not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile? Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Deja vu! But you know, I like a lot of things. Don't feel intimidated if you don't read much, okay? I'm certain we can find something that we have in common. Hey, Yuri! Eh? 
Well, about, you know, the first thing you said. <clears throat> manga? That's right. Natsuki tends to read manga in the club room. D don't just say it! For some reason, Natsuki seems embarrassed about it. Besides, manga is literature too, you know! So if Ken wants to read some of my manga, then don't try to stop him or anything. Natsuki? I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it could also be nice for us to diversify ourselves a little. He can take his opportunity to try something new as well. Wouldn't you agree, Ken? Maybe. Sensing the tension, Siari jumps in. Maybe we can all try something new. I think it could be fun. And we'll all get to know each other a little bit better, too. I mean, that's the kind of thing a literature clubs do, right? I, I don't disagree or anything. Yeah, you're a right as usual, President. Hehehe. <laughs> Guess that means I should try picking up a novel or something, huh? Well, that would make two of us. I wouldn't mind doing it if I'm not the only one. And as for Yuri... Eh? I, I have to read manga? Jeez, you were the only one who suggested we diversify. Are you really that empty-headed or something? You should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I, I didn't realize. With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks to herself, I'm sorry for disrespecting your interest, Natsuki. If you're into it, I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you just saying that? No, I realized my error. So if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my graduate by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I, I mean, it, it makes me happy that you do that for me, Yuri. You can trust me to find something like you really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. Just, just you? Uh, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so. Yeah, me too. Like, nobody ever around here is interested. This is so cute! Siori, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes. I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri started to clean up the food. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along, isn't it? <coughs> Jeez. Ugh, I'm losing track of my voices again. I think everyone likes you too, Ken. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along a little bit better with you around. So Jesus Christ, I did it again. Well, everyone always seems to get along a little bit better with you around, Siori. Aw, Ken. Don't say something like that. It's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're gonna make it the best club ever! Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun! Hey, Ken. I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is... I already knew you were going to- Oh boy. Hehehe. <laughs> Something tells me we're in a world of history repeating itself. There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Ken. <laughs> I know how hard you tried to make everyone happy. I know all about the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world. I can't wait to spend every day like this. With you. Forever and ever. I think... I'm going to go over here now. Okay. O R E B E No. Hey. What's happening? Could it be? Who? It, it hurts. Ah. 
person. Monica. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, Ken. Goodbye, Literature Club. <laughs> What's going on now? Uh, can you hear me? <clears throat> Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff, and not really any good at it yet, like at all. But I wrote you a song. Well. Really hard on you. So, yeah. Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with you. my pen only write better words for those who are dear to me is it love if i take or is it love if i set you free Okay, well that ladies and gentlemen was uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, so good job uh, Team Salvato. Ah, one last letter. <clears throat> this is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand. The Literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. Sorry about that. For the time it lasted, I wanted to thank you for making all of my dreams come true, for being a friend to all the club members, and most of all, thank you for being a part of my literature club with everlasting love, Monica. P.S. Here's 20 bucks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, it doesn't really matter here. I'm going to stop the stream here. Anyways, I'm that Soki Doki Literature Club. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see everybody. Bye.